Okay, I think we will we'll start now. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for attending this, this webinar. Um, this webinar is, its purpose is to show you or demonstrate to you the ClickView Heidi connector. Um, we actually ran the same webinar on Wednesday, uh, but due to interest, um, we're running it again today. So there's about uh, 15 of you on the on the call this morning. Um, I've I've muted your lines because there's a lot of background noise if you un unmute all the lines, um, and the format of this morning is uh, Chris Brain from Industrial Code Box. Uh, Chris's team developed uh, a product called QB Source, which has a variety of connectors to um, underlying sources like like, like Facebook um, and like Twitter. And by by working with with Chris Stedham at Bath Spa University, um, uh, that they they have created or developed a Heidi connector, which uses the the Heidi API. Um, to go and actually interrogate the Heidi system and fetch uh, fetch data, it really I've, I've seen it twice now presented to me. Um, it really simplifies the way that Heidi data can be extracted and, and loaded into into ClickView. Um, so the format of this morning is Chris will just introduce um, Industrial Code Box and QB Source to you and the and the, the the Heidi connector that they have developed. It's Chris Brain. And then Chris Stedham, who most of you probably know from our user group and user days, will actually demonstrate the, the connector to you. We finished quite it, it didn't take too long on Wednesday, so the you know from our side, from both Chris's side, it may just take half an hour or 25 minutes. Um, but then we will have some qu some time for questions and answers afterwards. Um, and if you look at the on the right hand side of your screen, you've probably got a a little go to meeting panel at the very bottom. Some of you have already used it. There's a chat box, and uh, instead of sort of everybody talking at the same time, it might be better just to type the question in during the um, the presentation and the demonstration. And um, you know, we can we can have a session at the end where, where we can answer those those questions. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to to pass over to Chris Brain from Industrial Code Box who developed um, the connector, and he will just take you through um, the uh, some background on the on, on Industrial Code Box and the connectors that they've developed. Uh, thank, thanks very much, Steve. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine, Chris. Great. So, yeah, good morning um, and welcome to everyone to this webinar. My name is Chris Brain and I'm the um, kind of co-founder and chief techie, I suppose, at Industrial Code Box and we're the company behind the product we're going to be looking at today. Uh, just a brief bit of background on our company. We are a ClickView technology partner and we've been um, innovating and developing various add-ons for ClickView over the past seven or eight years now. Um, we've, we've, um, we were the company behind the ClickView workbench and the SharePoint web parts which were later acquired by ClickTech and we also have an XO add-in um, which is now really available for extracting data from ClickView. So essentially we've had a, a, a very long and um, fruitful relationship with ClickTech and we're quite well known I would say and interested in the community and, and our speciality really in, in most of what we've done is in getting data both in and out of um, ClickView. Uh, so QV Source really is our flagship product now and, and, and the, the reason we kind of created it is because ClickView has always been traditionally very good at getting data from sources inside of your business such as SQL databases and Excel files and 
flood files and that sort of thing. But of course, these days, more and more companies are using hosted cloud-based solutions, and they've also got some kind of interest in what's happening on other platforms such as social media. So we developed a suite of connectors, really. I think we've got about 20 that connect to some of the, mo some of the most commonly um, requested APIs. And they, our product sits alongside ClickView, so it needs to be up and running, essentially, wherever a ClickView reload is taking place. So it might be a ClickView publisher machine or a server, or just even you can run it on your local desktop. And our product will then communicate with the APIs on behalf of ClickView. So, I mean, here you can just see on the left this typical kind of unstructured API response that ClickView doesn't really understand natively. So our connect will take care of manipulating and, and mapping that into a QBX-type file format, which ClickView can then read very quickly and natively. And so in that, in that way, QB source takes care of a number of kind of tasks on your behalf. So it takes care of things like authentication, we can do things with caching to improve the performance and the, and the um, workflow of some of these services. We take care of generating load scripts for you. And as, as you'll see in the demo coming up, the way QV Source just gives you a copy and paste option so you can generate the code you need for your QV applications. And we take care of keeping up with API changes in the background. So if you know Facebook or Heidi, they change a feature or add a feature or remove a feature, as the ClickView user or developer, you're kind of abstracted away from that. So, you know, what we're doing is we're, we're removing the skill required to connect to a broad range of APIs. And here we've got listed some of the connectors that we have. So we have, um, obviously, Heidi is the new one, but we've got some of the social media, such as Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook Insights. Google Analytics is a very popular one. Mo many websites now we use Google Analytics to do their website tracking. We've got Google Drive, Google Spreadsheets, which might be interesting to some, um, I guess, universities. Uh, we've got a connector, and the other connector we have is this one, the first one listed, is kind of a general JSON XML SOAP API, so if we don't have a specific connector to a specific service, there's a good chance with a bit more, with a bit more technical knowledge, you can then maybe use this connector to um, get your data from this API from an API into ClickView. So the, the punchline, I think, is that QV Source plus ClickView gives you more insights. Um, it helps you extend your investment in ClickView by um, allowing you to bring in data from both inside and outside your business into a shared unified dashboard, and it saves you going to all these different systems. You know, you don't need to go to maybe Heidi or to Google Analytics or to Facebook to figure out what's going on there. You can bring it all into a a ClickView dashboard, and you can push it out over, you know, the iPad or the Ajax client. Uh, so just a bit about the kind of feedback we've been getting. We're, we're generally the highest rated product on the Click Market, so we've had a very favorable response there, and we've got um, 118 professional recommendations on LinkedIn. Um, we're very well regarded for our support service and our ability to turn around changes and fixes rapidly. Um, you'll find on our website a, a, a number of case studies, and hopefully we'll have one for Heidi there soon as well. Uh, if you'd like to try out the product, you can just go to our website, qvsource.com, click the free trial button. We ask for a few details, and you'll immediately get an email with a download link, and I think a four-week um, fully, kind of fully functional evaluation edition. Uh, we have full, a very comprehensive documentation wiki, which has got has a page for every connector as well as a setup guides on how to get the product up and running, how to set up on a server so you can set it up as a service so it's always up and running on your ClickView server and that sort of thing. And if you do need any help, you can either call us with the numbers on our website or you can just drop us an email and we'll get back to you um, as soon as we can. And that's really just a quick whirlwind tour of where we've, where we've come from and what the product's for. And I'll now pass back to Steve or Chris for a demo. And I look forward to answering any questions towards the end of the session. Great. Thank you, Chris. Um, it was great. It was a, a nice, uh, nice introduction um, to, to what your QB sourced industrial code box does. I'm going to hand over now to Chris Stedham, uh, who has the job of demonstrating the um, the uh, highly connected to you. So I'm going to 
change the screen over to, to you, Chris. Thanks, Steve. There you go, okay. Chris. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Dedham from Bath Science University. Uh, we've been using ClickView for about four and a half years now, um, and we use it for analysing all sorts of data from many many types of system, from uh, finance, student records, HR, all those sorts of things. And um, we think it's really good. Um, the problem we had uh, was getting data to show against our own data sets. Uh, for benchmarking purposes or to supplement our own analysis and um, as I suspect many of you on the uh, webinar today that you are subscribers to the Heidi service um, and you are able to get a wealth of data out of or see a wealth of data on the Heidi service uh, just to show you an example of what you can get out um, so here you have a typical Heidi report which you've carefully agonized over for several hours until it gets to, to look exactly as you want it. Um, and then you want to take that data and you want to put it somewhere. Um, but it's very difficult to do so. So you can take this data and you can you can um, you can put this into Excel, which looks a bit like this. Um, then you've got to sort of sort out these these descriptors in here and try and get them against the data. Or you, you download the uh, the um, the XML option, and you get something that looks like this, which is not very helpful, and it's very difficult to to actually get some some meaningful data out of that. Um, about a year ago, uh, beginning of the summer last year, Hisa uh, made available a uh, a request for help with an API. Um, and I, I asked to be part of the API uh, group uh, to see if we could use it. We it sort of felt the timing felt quite nice for us because we were we were trying to add analysis to a to a to a click view which was particularly interested in benchmarking ourselves against other institutions. And we had gone down this route of trying to get the data out of Heidi and decided that. To be, you know, the the investment of trying to get this data from Heidi into ClickView was year on year was going to be problematic. So, I uh, elected to be be part of the API group, and I uh, wrote a small application that would help us get data out of the API. Uh, the problem was it was a bit fiddly, um, and we were un even though it was getting the data, we'd have to store the data somewhere. So it, was not, it wasn't just bringing the data into ClickView. We'd have to take the data and put it somewhere and then go and find it afterwards and load it back in, all those sorts of things. Um, and it just wasn't as nice as, as something that would just interface to it. I demoed uh, my little application at the last HE user group to a few people who were, seemed very impressed with it. So um, on the way home on the train, I was uh, I'd, I'd heard about, we'd, I'd seen QB source before and thought maybe this is something they could help with. So um, on the way home on the train I found the wiki page which tells you how to request help with a connector and quite a long train journey home so I uh, spent some time uh, putting together some documentation for Chris and Industrial Cobox to, to, to follow and eventually we ended up with a, uh, w with a connector. Um, which is what I'm going to demo to you now. Um, Steve has very kindly put half an hour down for me to do this, but really the connector is so simple it doesn't really take long at all. Uh, so I'm just going to show you the connector. So when you fire up the connector and you get it installed, uh, this is the window that you see, and you can see all these connectors that are available. We're interested in the Heidi connector, so I'm going to double click on the Heidi connector and it opens up a blank window. Um, here you can see some credentials that I've had to input. Uh, so immediately you can tell that you can only use this if you are actually a subscriber to Heidi already. Um, to, be, to enable you to use the, the Heidi connector, what you need to do is you need to get your Heidi administrator, if you're not one already, to go and get you uh, an API key. Uh, may go and do that from the Heidi website. Um, 
I'm not an administrator, but if you were uh, an administrator, you'd have an additional option up here somewhere uh, pointing you towards getting an API key, and you can just create a new API key. And that's, that's effectively your username and password for, the, for, the, for this, this connector. Um, if you've tried doing some stuff on Heidi before to, to get some reports out and some data out, it's quite can be quite torturous trying to navigate the, the data structures in there. So um, what this does is it simplifies that and exposes the API methods that are available and allows you to just go and get some data from, from Heidi quite quickly. So here I can select a row type and here I might select institution. And then I might choose a year that I'm interested in. Um, so let's get 11, 12 data. As you can see, I can only select one year, one institution, uh, one, one row type, for example. And that is because, because behind the scenes, something, something is happening with the, with the, the, with the metadata at uh, HESA, which doesn't readily allow them to, to send you multiple years. I believe it is an enhancement request in, uh, with, with, uh, with HESA at the moment for the Heidi connector, um, but at the moment you have to select one year at a time. Um, select the domain, I'm going to go and get some piece of staff information, um, and then I need to select a value type. I believe selecting multiple value types is also a, 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 an enhancement request that they, they, they've got in with, with this connector at the moment as well. So I'm going to choose staff or person equivalent staff, excluding atypicals, um, and it gives me a list of fields that I can I can select. So I'm going to select um, activity, uh, basic, age, uh, basic, and uh, gender. Um, once I've made all my selections here, I hit this big button down the bottom, run table, generate script. And there we are. So what's happened is the connector has gone away, and it's going to got some data from, from Heidi. And it's formatted it very nicely for me in this really easy to use grid. And this is exactly how it's going to look when I bring it into ClickView. And to get that into ClickView, it's very easy indeed. Up the top here, you've got a second tab, ClickView Load Script. If I go to that tab, you can see that it's got something that looks resembles a load script already. Um, you, can, you can add a prefix and change these sorts of things. And I'm just going to take the prefix off because I don't like it. Uh, and here you can see you've got a load load statement with a from that comes from some sort of web type thing. And this is the thing, this is the connector. You're really connecting to the connector through a through a web call and you're passing in the parameters here. And these are the parameters which I've basically selected from, from this thing over here. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to stick it into this click view. Okay, and I'm going to hit reload. There you go. Now it's gone and got that very quickly because actually the QV source plugin uh, connector has actually cached the data. So when I when I query the data here uh, within this grid, it means that the data is actually already stored for me locally, and it will just go and quickly get that very very fast indeed. Um, since the that's very useful for the Heidi data, the data doesn't change very often. So you know once you got certain queries that run and it's no problem just to keep going and keeping them in within the load script. It's very quick and very responsive, just brings it straight in for you. So let's pick on some of these things, bring in that. And there's some there's some selection boxes and maybe we want to add in a table. Oh which there's institution. And there we go. Very easy to do. That's data purely coming from Heidi, and it's uh, allowed me to bring that in very quickly. And that's all very interesting. But what we what we particularly wanted to do was we wanted to bring in uh, this data alongside our own data sets. So we just going to show you an example of something which we've developed, which is which is about 
um, measure, looking at diversity within our organization um, for a diversity report, which is done by HR every year. And this is our diversity report. So here you can see the bars, and the bars are our data that come directly from uh, our HR system. It is the same data that's gone to gone to HESA already, but it's obviously at that level, grand, much more granular level than HESA provides through the API. Um, and floated over the top, you can see we've got these comparators. Uh, and you can see, uh, for example, if we have a look at our age distribution, you can see our organization is a bit older than the average in our area or in the southwest or um, for all universities in the in, in, in the HESA data set. Um, and we've replicated that through each each area that you can see there. Um, I think that's about it really. Uh, we can, so what I've shown you is that we can add to our own existing click use by pulling data from Heidi and allowing people to provide comparators onto, uh, into, with, alongside your own data. Back to you, Steve. Is there anything else? Thank you, Chris. That was, uh, that was really good. Even better than Wednesday. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do now is um, you could uh, to type some questions into the chat box. We can unmute you um, as well if, if, if you want us to. Just send me a, 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 a chat and just say unmute me if you want to speak and, um, and ask a question as well. But uh, as I said, down bottom right, you guys have got a... Um, chat box there and uh, yeah thank you very much Chris that was um was good thank you very much both Chris's so I'll, I will um, mute the lines again and uh, wait for any questions that you want to put to either Chris Stedham from Bath Spa or to Chris Brain from Industrial Code Box Okay, um, we've got a question from <clears throat> from John at Chipster. Hello, John. <laughs> um, which is, Chris, if you wanted to pull in another year, would you have yes. to add a second load script? Um, you would indeed. You would indeed. And unfortunately, it's not simply a case of just editing this load script. If you pass control back to me, Steve. Will do. Okay. Hang on a sec. I shouldn't have taken it away in the first place. You see me now? Yep. Yeah. So it's unfortunately it's not a case of just coming in here and you can see the parameters are actually t stored in here. It's not a case of just changing the the year value here, unfortunately, because all these parameters are interlinked. So you would have to replicate what you've just done within the within the connector, which isn't probably too difficult to do. Uh, we just change that to there. Uh, it has cleared a few things, but that's because the the connector has changed a few of those things. Um, because the behind the scenes the values aren't the same, just the descriptions may be, may be the same, but not necessarily. Um, and so you would have to come in here and redo those selections that you had just done, um, which I can't remember what I did now, but uh, I think that was probably about right. Um, yeah, let's generate again. And it will go and get the second set of data, then you could simply do a concatenate on that, so take this load script again. Oh, 
to make sure it looks the same. Looks similar. I don't know if it's going to uh, come in a slightly different order. And you might need to completely unscripted. Why not try that? <laughs> Concatenate. Okay. Now this year has become a bit more useful. And there's 10, 11, and there's 11, 12. I'll probably put it into there. So that's the that's the only way currently. I know that Heidi are thinking of an enhancement to the API, which would allow you to go and get multiple multiple years or multiple other things, but 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 it's not there at the moment. You'd have to do it yourself. Thanks, Chris. John, was that was that okay? I've actually unmuted you, John. So if, um, if you could you could probably talk if you wanted to, but um, just wanted to see if that. That answer the question. Yes, can you can you hear me? Yeah, hear you fine, John. Was that okay, John? John says that's fine. Chris. <laughs> Good. Okay, we don't have any other questions at the moment, um, but as I say, please use the chat box um, to put them in. Uh, this a Heidi API has been a hot topic on our forum, so I know it is of interest to 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 probably most of you. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I think this goes quite a way to. Um, to addressing that, uh, we've got a, another question in um, from from Tom from Loughborough, which is: Do you have to bring all institutions in, or can you use groups in Heidi to bring selective lists across? Um, I don't believe so at the moment. Uh, there are some enhanced. I've gone on about these announcements. I'll just show you the announcement list, I think, if I can find it. Um, um, there are some uh, enhancements in so that you can, sort of the thinking of bringing other things in from, to allow you to use other things available in Heidi as part of your queries. Um, for example, the other day when we were doing this webinar, someone said, Would it be, wouldn't it be great if you, could, if you could pick on, say, a name, a named report that you have already configured and Use that to bring that down, uh, and that would be that would be possible. It would be an extension to the API, but I think we already obtained that that wouldn't be a problem to uh, to do that. Um, but no, not at the moment. It's not um, it's not something that that um, that you can do. But you could use a uh, well, there's several ways. You could use any other you way of getting. You could you could put it in a where clause, or you could um, you could build a list, a separate list that you. You then load in and select from select by using that. Thanks, Chris. Was that okay? So answer the question. I yeah, suppose. Tom says. Tom yeah. says thank. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Um, Tom, what we we would also do usually is is thick view is not um thick view is very sort of data hungry so. We could, um, you know, you would, you'd often bring everything in, and then you would group the institutions, you know, into your, let's say, Russell group or into your comparative group once you had brought the data in. So I know you guys aren't um, click for you users yet, but uh, that's that's generally what happens is um, once the information is in, you can then group it and say these ten universities form part of our competitor group. These these. 20 form part of this group and you can group them once the, the information is in. Okay, I can't see any more questions yet. We'll just wait a bit. Um, it does take a while to type them in.
while you're thinking of some questions, I will just uh, say two things, which is um, there will be a, we will put a recording of this webinar up on, the, on our website um, after this um, after this after this webinar so it will be there if you wanted to show anybody else um, we will also send you an email with the link um, to download QB source software and the Heidi uh, connector as well and um, there is a time based um, uh, uh, sort of a free trial period um, allowed to, to to use the product and we, we are looking for people to try and play with it and test it um, and see what it can do and, Chris from Industrial Code Box, do you know how long that uh, free period is? Um, uh, yeah, I think it's four weeks, I think. Okay. It might be three, but I think it's four, yeah. So it's quite it's quite substantial. And also we um you know, we, we can extend licenses as well if you know you, you feel you need longer. So we're, we're quite flexible. And yeah, we're very interested in feedback and you know opportunities to we can improve the product. As I think I mentioned on the last call, there are a few quirks with the ID API, which means that sometimes, depending on your the combination of drop downs you pick, sometimes you kind of get an error message and it resets everything. Um, and I think, yeah, we said last time, the, the te technically the API isn't yet at version one, so hopefully that any kind of remaining inconsistencies will be fixed and then we can update the product and it will be a little bit more. Um, yeah, a little bit more refined. Right, okay. Uh, if, there's one more question from uh, John from Chichester again, which I've sent on to you, Chris, but it says, uh, will that load script always work, or do you have to generate it each time you want to do a reload? Chris Stedham, could you take that one, if you don't mind? Yeah. Uh, that load script will always work, if the if the QB source product is running, um, there's, do you, how do you mean regenerate it? You mean having to come into here and and cache the data because you you don't have to do that. Once this is done, you can um, just use the load script as long as the Heidi uh, the the QB source uh, connector product is running, then it will just go and get that data. If it doesn't have it cached, it will go and get it from the from the um, from the internet, so I can clear the cache data, close it down, and then it will take a bit longer, but I should be able to reload that. And you can see that it's getting away and getting that data. There you go. It took a bit longer that time. Chris John also asks, are any of the parameters date slash time sensitive? Um, I'm not sure what, what um, what's meant by that. Um, the, you mean the parameters in here? Uh, I'm waiting for, um, I've actually unmuted you again, John, but you may not be able to hear you, so maybe just type type in the response into the chat. Hello, Chris. Hi, John. Hello. Hi, hi. Um, sorry, I was just wondering if the the parameters question was um, it, about the load script. So, if it would keep, if you could go back to it a week later and just run it again. But you, you've already answered that. So that's what I was meaning about the the date time sensitivity. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, if you if you just go back and run it again, then you just get the same data without. Um, if you don't. Um, don't clear the cache, then we'll just go and get it from the cache. But I think that's configurable, probably by, by industrial code box about caching. I think it means it makes sense to cache the data. The data doesn't change generally once it's been once it's been published by HESA. 
Thanks, Chris. Okay, um, you know, no more questions. I'll just think I'll give it a few more minutes to see if any anybody else asks any more questions. Okay, I think um, I think we'll leave it there. Um, some people have already left the session, but um, thank you, Chris Stedham. Thank you, Chris Brain, for the input there. And uh, as I say, I will send an email out with the slides and with the address where you can download the trial. And uh, thank you again, Chris and Chris, and thank you everybody for for attending.